Okay, so for today's video, we will be going over chapter 2, section 5, which is inequalities. And before we get in, into any examples or problems, we should go over what interval notation is. And that is if the interval is closed, open, or half open, or half closed. And there are four different types. And to indicate if it is closed, there will be two brackets. To indicate if it is open, there will be two parentheses. And if it is half open or half closed, there will be a bracket and a parenthesis. If the interval is closed, there will be a less than or greater than or equal to sign. If the interval is open, there will just be a less than or greater than sign. And if the interval is half closed or half open, there will be one of each. Okay, so say we wanted to look at interval notation on a number line graph. We have our first example, which is negative infinity to 2 with a parenthesis and a bracket. So that indicates that our interval is half open and half closed. So for our bracket, which indicates that that is a closed part of the graph, we have it at 2, which is closed, and then to the left negative infinity, which is open. And for negative 2 to infinity, we have two parentheses, which indicates that the interval is open. So we start at negative two with our open part of the graph and just continue to the right with infinity. And that is also open. And for our third interval, we have negative infinity to infinity and two parentheses, which is an open graph and our number line would simply just go on into infinity with an open interval. So the next thing that we so are next going, to we're going to talk about a compound inequality, which is when two or more inequalities are joined together. So here we have technically one big inequality. B is less than C and C is less than D. So we can break this into two smaller inequalities. So then we would have E is less than C and C is less than D. Okay, so for our first example, we have negative five is less than or equal to two X minus one is less than or equal to X plus seven. And so we compound this inequality into two smaller inequalities, which then we can work with. And we have negative five is less than or equal to two X minus one and 2x minus 1 is less than or equal to x plus 7. So for the first step, we add 1 to both sides, which leaves us with negative 4 is less than or equal to 2x, and then we divide 2 on both sides, and we get negative 2 is less than or equal to x. So then here, we have 2x minus 1 is less than or equal to x plus 7, and since we have two variables, we can subtract this x from 2x, which leaves us with x minus 1 is less than or equal to 7. Add 1, add 1, we have x is less than or equal to 8. And then we get negative 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 8, which leaves us with negative 2 comma 8 as our final answer. And these less than or equal to signs indicate that we have two brackets and a closed interval. So on the number line, this is how it would look with two closed circles. So for a second example, it's a little bit different than the first. We have negative two is less than four minus three X is less than six. So since we cannot make two separate inequalities from this because we have one variable, we have to subtract four, subtract four, and subtract four which leaves us with negative six is less than negative three x is less than two. So we divide three by each of the numbers and we get negative six divided by negative three is two. We get x and two divided by a negative three is a negative two thirds. So our final answer is a negative two thirds comma two with two parentheses so we have the open interval and so this is how it would look on the number line add a negative two thirds and a two so for our third example we have x to the fourth minus x to the third minus 12x squared is greater than 4x plus 10 
and instead of doing all of this algebraically, we can simply subtract 4x and subtract 10 and get this pretty much equal to zero and graph it and make our lives 10 times easier. So I will show you how to do this through Desmos. So as you've seen from the graph on Desmos, we have an intersection at 2.97 and an intersection at 4.21. So that leaves us with the answer of negative infinity to negative 2.97 and 4.21 to infinity with an open interval because we have parentheses. So I will also show you how to do this in your regular graphing calculator because on a test you cannot use Desmos and you will have to know how to do this on your graphing calculator. fourth example is x squared plus 3x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0 and here we can either plug it into the calculator and graph it or simply do the quadratic formula and here if you put it into the calculator the graph would be super hard to read and it's just using the quadratic formula is a easier way to do it so the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So here is our negative b, so negative 3 plus or minus b squared minus 4ac. And instead of put it, substituting a for x squared, we just use 1 because there's no number in front of the x. And so you get 2 divided by a, which is 1, and then x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 17 divided by 2. So then you get negative 3 minus the square root of 17 divided by 2 is greater than or equal to x. It's greater than or equal to negative 3 minus the square root of 17 divided by 2. So for example 5, we have x minus 3 x plus 6 and x plus 1 to the fourth and they're all in parentheses and greater than or equal to zero so like before we can plug it into decimals or on the graphing calculator and i'll plug it into decimals and show you how their graph looks and if you want to take it further and plug it into a calculator feel free So you've now seen the graph on Desmos and my graph interpreted. So we have negative six and three, and we disregard this because it doesn't completely cross the x-axis. And we know that this is a closed interval because of the greater than or equal to sign. So our last example for our inequalities video is a word problem. A projectile is fired straight upward from ground level with its initial velocity 160 feet per second. Its height in feet after x seconds is modeled by 
f of x equals negative 16x squared plus 160x. So, during what time interval will the height of the projectile be greater than 336 feet? So we take our f of x equation, make it greater than 336 feet, but since there is not a variable on each side of the equation, we cannot have a compound inequality. So we have to subtract 336 and set it to greater than zero. And we can plug this into our graph and I will show you how to do that through Desmos. So after looking at the graph from Desmos, you can see that at 3 and at 7, there was a shaded region. So that means that during the 3 and 7 second interval, the height will be greater than 336 feet. 